Aiv. Om Tat Savitur Varenam Bargo Devasya Dima Oops. Deo Yona Prachodayat Hey! Hi! Come say hello to me. And what's your sign? Hi everybody, Elaine Marilaco Settleson with Astrology Mojo and want to help you get your mojo back. And in case you're new to me and you don't know that I say, I say, <laughs> I say that the planets in astrology uh, don't do anything to you, that we live in a cooperation with the cosmos so that when the planets make a move, you feel it. When you make a move, the planets reflect that by way of aspects and angles in astrology. And we're going to look at what some of those aspects and angles look like today. I hope everyone is adjusting to the adjustment of being more at home. Um, it is now official in Arizona, finally. That is a stay-at-home rule. And uh, it's a healthy thing. And we're, gonna, we're going to uh, help ourselves and help our communities by doing what we can from home. It doesn't mean, you know, just playing cards and watching TV. It also means having the time to educate, to learn, to do those things that you say you never have time for. Okay, so meditating three minutes a day, it's not that hard. So, um, hey, Julia's here, Scorpio. Welcome, Miss Scorpio. And uh, we're going to be talking about Mars entering the sign of Aquarius today. And I, I pulled some cards and uh, we'll talk about those too. Um, so let's just get into the Mars thing. Uh, I've been talking about Venus going into retrograde motion coming up in mid-May. And what I'm seeing now is a, is a whole configuration of what's being reflected here on Earth. So when any planet goes retrograde, not just Mercury, but when a planet goes retrograde, it, it represents you going inward. And depending on the planet that it's in or the, the house that it's in in your chart uh, is more specific to what the topics relate to. But in general, um, we just had Saturn moving into the constellation of Aquarius just as a sneak peek preview between March 21st and July 2nd of this year. And then it retrogrades back into Capricorn for its final pass for another 27 years. And then back in Aquarius, December, for two plus years. And what that's going to mean um, for a lot of people is we're looking at, especially if you're in Aquarius, sun rising or moon, or one of the fixed signs, Scorpio, Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, uh, has more of an impact because you are ready to transform something. It's not that the planet's doing anything to you. Mm -mm. You are ready to transform something. So when I talk about the planets, um, I want you to imagine them as people. And they uh, are your representatives <laughs> in the astrological sense. So that when you're undergoing something, you 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 know, instead of saying, oh, they did it to me, or that's happening, you know, I'm this way because that's happening. Well, that's happening to show you what you can do with yourself, with your ideas, your needs. <laughs> I almost wanted to say pathologies. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe that's for someone to hear. Uh, I had to bite my tongue like twice. Okay. But anyway, for the rest of us, um, it's looking at how we feel about something and, or many things, many some things, and what we can do to take this time now in this time to transform how we feel and what we believe. Because if you don't change the inner uh, construct, the outer construct stays the same. So when there is something like a virus, a pandemic, um, you know, asteroids, whatever, solar flares, when we're looking at something that affects the global, uh, we are seeing a time of accelerated transformation. Okay, that's what that represents. So as Saturn, which represents uh, brick and mortar buildings, uh, the industries of society, education, medical, 
uh, banking, business, and uh, the the old guard. Okay, the old guard. Um, w when we see that entering to the sign of Aquarius, it's a sneak peek into, oh boy, here it comes. <laughs> what? What's coming? Um, our need to upgrade, our need to heal, our need to move out of the the old stodginess of what used to be appropriate, even though a lot of times, you know, women having to fight for their rights is not appropriate. But we're still fighting. And people are still fighting. And there people are still judging. And so what this whole virus thing is bringing up for us, uh, in a lot of ways is the ability to take stock of who you are, what you really believe, and what you want to do about it and how to transform that. Now, in the sign of Aquarius, guided by Uranus, and that is the correct pronunciation, um, represents uh, technology, higher thinking, evolution, breaking the ties that bind, the chains that cause um, this. Maybe that's the pathology because the word keeps coming to slavery, to um, unconscious harm, harmful behavior. And uh, so we're breaking those chains. So Saturn chains and making change. Um, Saturn in the sign of Aquarius now, sneak preview through July 2nd, is helping us to, to envision what's next. How do we move our businesses to a new place? How do we look at things like uh, Jeff Bezos not wanting to compensate his employees and yet asking them to give up their money for other employees um, at Whole Foods? Like, what's that about? A billionaire saying, yeah, the people can take care of each other. Ooh, but you're you're a people too, Jeff, right? And this is not a political forum, and, and I'm not going to start that discussion, but I'm saying things like that, things that deal with higher technology, the elements of change, and what you can do to produce that next solution. What's the evolution of your solution? Hey, gents here, so is Elizabeth. We got an Aries, we have a Pisces, we have a Scorpio, and we have other people watching who are not commenting. Come say hi. Um, so yeah, mm, there's a lot being changed right now. And, and I want to congratulate the people who work at the supermarkets at the, at, well, the, our credit union just is on a limited, uh, appointment only basis. Um, but even the people who are working the garbage disposal, anything that, um, needs fixing and they're, they're ready because they need to work. They need the money, but also this is their livelihood and helping you to get what you need. So getting what you need is under uh, revision right now, right? Hey, Vicki Capricorn. So getting what you need is under revision. How do you want to get what you need without whining and complaining about it? How do we do that? Well, there's lots of ways, but I can suggest a couple that are so simple. First, stop judging. Uh, we want to stop judging everybody and everything. We are not putting blame. We are not, um, yeah, we're going to stop judging. That's how we're going to begin. <laughs> we're, not, we're not going to, um, I mean, we, we have to take a stand in certain areas and we need to support local businesses even if it's just restaurants here in Sedona, open only for takeout, only for takeout. So support these people. So go out and support your people because this is us. This is us. Not to, um, it's not about the TV show, This Is Us, although that was really entertaining and heartwarming. And, but uh, this is us, folks. And so how can we make this transition? When I look to astrology and I look at things like Saturn moving into the sign of Aquarius, it's like um, picture, and I can't get rid of this image, but picture a nun getting on a motorcycle. Or Sister Wendy, that's the ultimate Saturn in Aquarius <laughs> image. Anybody familiar with Sister Wendy? I love Sister Wendy. Okay. 
a Catholic nun who talks about classic paintings, and she'll talk about these very sexual paintings, nude figures <laughs> in the most refreshing way, you know, not afraid to delve into, this is what it is, people. So what? I have a habit on. So what? Um, let's talk about sensuality. I mean, I just love Sister Wendy. Okay. So when Saturn is in Aquarius, it's an introduction to taking what is old, your construct, your belief system, your judgments, and transforming them. It's not as easy as we would like it to be because we get attached. And, um, but I always like to say that Uranus is the planet that represents the energy on this earth that created the chain link of slavery and the bolt cutter simultaneously. So you have a choice always. Um, where do you start to complain? Where do you start to whine? Where do you lose the childlike innocence of who we are? Your home. And if you have electricity, food, and water, consider yourself and shelter, consider yourselves, you know, one of the lucky because the rest of the world is not that lucky. So wherever you can make a contribution, it does not have to be financial, but even sending thought forms, prayers, um, energy. And I mean, seriously, not like, oh, I wish them well. Okay, I'm going to go watch TV and, you know, and binge eat and watch. No, no, no. I mean, seriously, take three minutes and focus on, you know, pick the topic and go ahead and expand that compassion. Um, hey, Christine's here. Great to see you too, Laura Lee. I, today is Tuesday. I'm usually here on Mondays and Thursdays, folks, if you're, just, but there have been um, some, you know, we're making adjustments at home. We're making transitions. And so I had to switch a few days, but I'll be back on Thursday. Uh, that will be April, I gotta look at my calendar, April 2nd. Okay, I'll be back on Thursday, 10 o'clock, uh, Arizona PT time. Mm, Arizona, we don't change our clock, so we'll be on PT time. Um, okay, now let's just take a look at the screenshot for today, all right? Oh, ah, because I'm talking about Saturn in Aquarius now, sneak peek through July 2nd, and then it retrogrades back into Capricorn, which means people are going to have to up their game. You say you're a leader in your industry? Show me. You say you're a leader in uh, technology? Prove it. You say you're going to do something for your people? Okay. Now's the time. And so when then Saturn moves back into Aquarius in December of 2019 for another two plus years, that's usually the stint of Saturn, or yeah, it's two and a half years plus a couple months of introduction. And uh, we're going to see some real fast changes in how we think, in how we produce an industry, in how we deliver products you know, I've got my gloves by the door, my vinegar solution mixed with hydrogen peroxide in a spray bottle, and anything that comes from Amazon or the mail goes to my front door. I open the door. I spray everything. I rip open the packages, take out the inner, and then immediately put the rest, rest in the trash. So there's like a new awareness now of being extra cautious about what you're doing, how you're doing it, and why. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, we have Mars just entered the sign of Aquarius and will be there, <coughs> pardon, and will be there until May 12th. So um, with Mars, let me, here's what it looks like, actually. Ah, there we go. Okay, I'll take a sip. Come say hello. Who's here? <clears throat> okay, so, pardon me, um, you can see up at the top of the screen, we have, and this is today's date, March 31st, 2020, and uh, you can see Jupiter is in Capricorn, and uh, expansion is what Jupiter represents in Capricorn, in the structure of things, how, how, the how, and the why, <laughs> of what you're doing. And uh, Pluto, right next to Jupiter, Jupiter looks like the, uh, the, it's the green one at the top, and it looks like a, um, a number four. And uh, then right next to that is Pluto. Pluto represents core transformation. TNT for the psyche in Capricorn. And uh, they are conjunct. 
today. So this is a really auspicious week. Uh, when I'm back on Thursday, I'll be talking about the conjunction of uh, Mercury with Neptune. Uh, you can see over to the other side, oh, wrong way, other side, ah, backwards. And uh, it's got um, three, four days of intensity from April 2nd through the 6th. And I'll be back on Thursday talking about that, which deals with medicine, healing, and um, vibration, and um, illness, and the perception of these things, okay? But also coming back to, all right, we've got Jupiter and Capricorn, we've got Pluto and Capricorn, and those two are conjunct, and conjunct in astrology means within eight degrees. These are an exact conjun conjunction at 24 degrees today. And what that means is there's going to be breakthroughs, breakthroughs. Prof you may not hear about it today, but today, um, all the, all this week, there are profound breakthroughs in any industry. Profound. Now, for the better or worse, we don't know. It depends on the industry, who's running it, and what the consciousness, consciousness is around it. What's your conscious relationship to the environment around you? That's going to really be a, a strong, let me just move this over and make it a little bigger um, to make it we can see the sun is in Aries right next to Chiron uh, there's Neptune and Mercury in Pisces they're about to conjunct uh, in a couple of days and I'll talk about that on Thursday but this particular thing I'm looking at right here oh and we've got a lot I don't know if you could see the red Q looking things those are quintiles to me those are spiritual angles we have a lot of them a lot, a lot, a lot of them to the South Node and the South Node and also to Neptune and I'm sorry, to Pluto and Jupiter. And the, the quintiles represent a spiritual awakening um, by degree. So as we learn what this is like, you know, to be here, to be uh, doing whatever we're doing, learning how to do it more better, <laughs> Is that a good English? We're learning how to do things more better, people. And uh, the concept of, and remember, planets don't do anything to you. They represent what you're undergoing. So when I look at this, I get excited because Mars is now in Aquarius uh, through May 12th. And that tells me that forward motion, it's like a slingshot of energy that there's fervor, there's excitement, there's a profound focus on solving a problem through higher technology, perhaps nanoparticles, perhaps um, it's the um, vaccines or the chemistry of what can happen, but it's also indicative of what's going on inside the body. So as people are washing their hands and taking extra precaution, they're realizing this is not the first time. This is, you know, if we only ever talked about uh, an expansion of a thing, you know, oh my gosh, brain tumors on the rise. It's a, it's a pandemic. Then everything would be focused on how does the brain work? Uh, what happens when there is a tumor? What, you know what I mean? So, uh, or, or we could just be focusing on, uh, rabid, uh, rabies in animals, you know, and then everyone thinks, oh my gosh, we have to be extra careful about, you know, space between my dog and your dog or my cat and going outside. And so, Life has always existed <laughs> in the science world. We may not be aware of it, however. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you can lower your amount of fear and panic that um, people who are, are just, just doing the basic smart thing. Let me just get rid of this page. Okay, the basic smart thing. What is that? Um, you know, we know, wash your hands. We know that. We know the sprays. We know. And the science is now revolving because uh, there's a learning curve. There's a big arc of a learning curve of what's happening. So once you understand what's happening today and take precautions, that affects the learning curve of tomorrow. You understand, right? <laughs> so um, there is now, according to uh, the governor in Arizona, there is a lockdown today. So stay at home is in place. And so when you think of a global experience, I look at it in astrology as where's Pluto and where's Saturn and where's Uranus. 
and the the what are called the outer planets and again the planets aren't doing it to you it's an indication of what's happening in the world and so um it's not to say it's exciting to watch people uh gasp for air never never but what's exciting is that finally people are coming out of complacency it's like move your butt would you please wake up i'm going to shake you by the shoulders and say we're just getting a little too comfortable in our safety zones and in that springs up judgment that's what produces armchair warriors you know oh they they are to blame or they could do it better or they well you're a part of they so let's make it a we and as we do what we can do and we look at this astrologically with mars and aquarius you're going to have this need to now okay you know, I've watched as many videos as I could and read a few books and did some cooking and shopped for my neighbors. Now what do I do? Well, if you're looking for work, there are places in Arizona. In fact, I think it's called Arizona to, to work .org or .com. I'm not certain, but there are, there are job postings. So please check that out and see if in your state you've got something going on or in your country, because I know I'm uh, viewed by a lot of people around the world. Um, but other than that, energetically, because Aquarius represents the higher tech, the higher tech in you is moving your thoughts because your, your environment changes your DNA, people. Your environment changes your DNA. This is science. So now you're at home. Does it feel good to be at home? You know, what needs to get done? And I don't mean about, you know, adding on a, a new room, but you need to clean out some of that clutter. Clutter represents confusion and attachment and being stuck and being stuck creates congestion and congestion creates a physical lethargy. And that lethargy leads to an immune uh, disruption and that immune disruption opens you up to, you know, fill in the blank. So do you understand? Go home and clean up, clean up your stuff, <laughs> get rid of your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> get rid of your stuff, you know, and as you start to raise your vibration and your level of awareness of what you can do for you and your family and your neighbors, yes. Um, now understand your learning curve, your learning arc. For some people, it's learning how to be isolated, how to be alone. And the thing I have, you know, spewed and talked about for years and years and years and years is, um, when you leave your parents' house, at least minimum six months by yourself, at least minimum six months by yourself. If you're someone who has gone from uh, family to marriage or roommates and you've never been alone, this is a jolt because now you're left alone with your thoughts. And it can be hard, it can be tough, um, but you have support. And we have the internet, we still have electricity, we still have communications, we still have um, ways to up the vibe, you can meditate, you can chant, you can play an instrument. As you clean out the clutter, you'll be inspired to do something else. Uh, oh, I'm just babbling on. Does this make sense? Let me say hello to people who's here. Hey, Maureen, great memory. My mother, Edith, loved Sister Wendy. Sister Wendy, right? She was awesome. Um, Jody is here. Amy is here. Welcome. Finally made it live. And Tony, I was thinking about you this morning, Tony. I don't know why you're, you just popped into my head. From Iowa. Welcome. Uh, we also have Australia viewing us. And I had a whole list, right? I used to read them off. I'll bring that back. So uh, what we can do now when we're thinking about, hey, Kate's here. Rocky Mountain. Ha ha. Colorado, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we've got Hong Kong, there's England, there's Poland, um, France, I know, and there's a whole lot of uh, all the uh, New Zealand, doo -doo -doo -doo, parts of England uh, viewing. So wherever you are in the world, I want you to utilize this time to do something with your mind. Now, when I said earlier that environment changes your DNA, that is an absolute positive thing. It doesn't have to be a negative thing. Now, I've talked about this story before, but um, Tony Robbins did a little experiment. 
I'm going to tell the story again, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, but Tony Robbins did a little experiment to find out about people's moods and perceptions. And what he did was, uh, as people were crossing a busy street, he had a plant, uh, not an actual plant, but a person holding a cup of hot coffee. And as they were at the red light, the person with the coffee, the plant, said to uh, their neighbor, excuse me, I'm just trying to grab my keys. Can you hold my coffee for just a sec? Okay, sure, no problem. The person did. The guy pulled out his keys, took the coffee, they crossed the street. When they crossed the street, the person who was asked to hold the cup of hot coffee was also asked on the other side of the street, hey, I, I, I saw you um, holding that person's coffee. What was your impression of that person? And it was across the board. Oh, really nice person, really kind um, they seemed polite. Okay, cool. Now they do another experiment where they have somebody standing on a corner, the plant with a cup of iced drink, whatever it was. Excuse me. Can you hold my cup of iced whatever? Oh, sure. I need to get my keys. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Cross the street, across the street. That person who was asked to hold the cup of an iced drink was also asked, what did you think of that person um, who asked you to hold that cup? Uh, they seemed kind of standoffish, a little rude, a little abrupt, a little cold. Across the board. Your environment alters your DNA, your perception. Your and it's proven also in uh, your metabolic response to things. Well, that's another conversation. But um, when some people love the cold, it's like they thrive. They, they love, you know, the chill, the air, the, Ooh, this is great. Other people, they need the, they need warmth. And so whatever you need to do to make your environment, that ideal, perfect, perfect place where you can thrive. Now is the time to do it because when things start to revolve and evolve and I'm, I keep getting July, there's going to be a massive shift in July. I don't know to what end or, or whatever, but um, I know that, and I'm not saying everyone's going to be on lockdown until July. It just feels like in July, something's going to turn. Now, um, there's going to be a lot of uh, emphasis put on how people can now make their money if they can't go to a job or if they do and they're exposing themselves. What kind of benefits can they have? So the insurance companies are going to have to change. Um, bigger industries need to change the way they think about their employees. It was it was a long time ago, I remember, that a woman was allowed um, two to six weeks, depending on the state, of um, um, pregnancy leave, maternity leave, I'm sorry, after a baby. And then, uh, which was unheard of, you know, six weeks, really? Uh, I think at least six months is what they should be given uh, to raise the next society member. But anyway... <laughs> opinions aside, then men were vying for maternity leave. So that was a new conscious awareness. That was a new construct in our society. And, and now it's how do we work at home or how do we support those who work in the community who that's their only means because not everyone has a computer. Let's be aware of that. And not everyone has the money uh, to work at home um, or the wherewithal. So they're out in the world. How do we support these people? They are us. They are parts of us, right? So this is what the indication is. And I feel like that's going to change and turn in July, uh, especially since in June and July, we're having eclipses. And you know what that means. Always, always, always. The planets don't do anything to you. But when we have eclipses, it is an indication of what transmutes in a person. Transmutation. You becoming your next highest biological self. And that includes awareness. Let me check in. I'm just blabbing, blabbing, blabbing. How's everybody doing today? Uh, Kate, yes. Uh, Vicki, it does make sense. Good. I'm so glad. <sighs> I'm going to be back on Thursday and I'm going to be talking about um, Neptune and Mercury in Pisces and what that represents as far as um, medicine and perception and illness and also um you know if you haven't seen it it's it's just look it up on youtube but bill gates has been talking about what his opinion is now uh also uh peter diamandis has also been they are going to science the sh blank t out of this uh he said and they are and so within 45 days they could have um a beta test 
but it would not be available to the public because of the protocols put in place on vaccinations for another 18 months anyway. So even though science is making progress in certain areas, we get snippets and then they get confused and then it becomes gossip and we don't always know. And that's okay. You're going to just do what you do until you know something. You know, you know what you know when you know it. And when you don't know it, what, where can you go? Well, uh, where I'd like you to go is inward. I want you to go in because the Saturn in Aquarius sneak peek tells us what's changing in the world as far as brick and mortar buildings, industry, technological, higher advancement, consciousness, awareness, and protocols. How is it going to change? What is it going to look like? Mars in Aquarius tells me that people are taking action big time. And some people are not taking healthy action. They are, I read about a guy who was told he worked at a grocery store and he got tired of being told how to be in a grocery store, but he was, it was uh, in the produce section and he was laying out uh, food and he got tired of his manager telling him what to do. So he took off his gloves, his mask, and he coughed on the produce. Of course, he was immediately fired. So people are going to extreme actions. Now, extreme for the better and extreme for not so the better. <laughs> there are always going to be a faction of people who want to take advantage of the situation. So we're going to raise our level of awareness. And when we do, we raise our consciousness. When we raise our consciousness, we raise our vibration. And then we vibrate an energy, the frequency of abundance. And when that happens, our environment, our inner environment, our outer environment come together and create a bigger bubble of healing. Um, that, you know, waves around the world. Let's do that. Okay. Let's do that. Now, when, um, just as Mars is coming out of, uh, Aquarius and enters into Pisces, which again, will be more about the illusion, the illusion, the delusions and the dream ideal vision come true action toward health. More of that. At the same time, Venus will be going retrograde in May through June. And that is about your finances, about your aesthetics, about being stripped of um, illusions. So I find it a really interesting combination of interplay of all these conditions coming together to create a whole new world. Shall I sing? A whole new world. No, I'm not. Um, anyway. <laughs> that's what's coming. <laughs> and then we right following up right after the Venus retrograde, we have a Mercury retrograde, that's a combo. And then we have the eclipses. So what I'm looking at in the next six months, wait a minute, what are we in? April, May, June, July, August, September. Yeah. What I'm looking at in the next five months, actually, is a rapid advancement of our societal protocols. It's just inevitable. We're having a growth spurt, people, and it doesn't feel good. You remember having those growth spurts? aches and pains and angst and uh, uh, and excitement and you know can't keep it in your pants and don't take a don't want to um, stop what you're doing and obsession and attachment and there's all that in the mix but you have power and your power resonates a frequency and that frequency comes into my living room hey wake up can't wake up. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> Vicky says, great mental picture, big bubble of healing. Yes, that's where we are, people. And I'm a very practical person, you know, but I got one foot in one world and one foot in another. And so I hear, I see, I express, I pass it on. Okay, so this morning I was, I was looking at this deck. Hang on while I reach for it outside my imaginary cafe. Ah! Okay, this deck, I, I liked it because it was small and I really liked the illustrations. The Oracle of Mystical Moments ba -ba -da -ba, by Katrine Welts Stein. So um, I did a meditation this morning and, and, you know, pulled a card for the group for today and this week. This week, I said, you know, what's uh, some great advice? Thank you, Angel, Starseed, um, Light Workers, Energy Workers. Please pass along some, some, some great news for us today. And I pulled a card that I didn't understand. I, I just, I, I thought, oh, really? 
Oopsie, there goes my Astro dice. <laughs> I drop them a lot, you notice? Okay, anyway, so I pulled the Sea Witch. <laughs> I didn't get it. Okay, it's a little girl, and um, it describes it as having all different parts of, and she's not even smiling. So I don't, I didn't get why, you know, what is this about? Uh, but the, but the book talks about innocence, the joy of play and wonder, and um, and inviting the waves, inviting the waves of wonder. And I thought, okay, well that's that's cool. Let me go to the fairies because I've been with fairies forever. And the fay the fay forest, even as a child, I would ride my bike and I would see them flying next to me. And so I asked the fairies for some advice and for today. And what I pull is the maiden and, and it's a child. It's a ch another child. And I'm thinking, okay, I am thick sometimes, but not that thick. Um, it's about the curiosity of, of being where you are and to seek guidance because children also do need um, adult supervision. But in that, look at that, to seek guidance and um, to draw on your innocence and be filled with joy. Now that's two cards regarding joy. So I want you to find your joy right now. And the, oh, and I also pulled a clarity card for the, uh, in the fairy deck, uh, the Brian Froud, Jessica Macbeth uh, deck. And it's, <laughs> it's called the, uh, the G Hobia. And it has to do with realistic caution, kind of, he almost looks ominous, right? Kind of scary, but he's really not. It's about your imaginary fears, imaginary fears. Okay, that's where panic comes in. And unreal hazards, being childlike, having joy, seeking supervision when needed, and and to look, um, literally, let me put this down, it's to look for, let me just show you his, his face again. He's kind of creepy, but it's about delving into old patterns. This is the old pattern of fear of, oh, you see, I told you not to go out, you know, um, but but you don't need the fear to heal. You don't need fear to set you off. Fear, you know, has its uses. You know, you're running from a tiger or whatever. It says, yeah, run faster. <laughs> but now it's just about being smart, okay? So when I pull those cards, it's utilize the joy in you to go beyond the fear, the old pattern, and to seek the truth behind the fear. What is the truth and your truth? And once you do that, you're going to feel a whole lot better. How does that sound, folks? Oh, there's more, more people. Hi, folks. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate your support. I will be back on a Thursday at 10 a.m., and that is Pacific time and uh, also uh, Arizona time, even though we don't change clocks. We just watch the, the world go back and forth. That's all we do. <laughs> All right, stay healthy, stay smart, go in and meditate. And on Thursday, we're going to talk about the perception of health and healing and how to raise the vibration through certain supplements and um, meditative practices or energetic practices, I should say. Not every, you know, a walking meditation is your, you don't always have to sit with your legs crossed and for an hour and you know, chant. You don't have to do that. There's things you can do outside. Uh, Vicky says, thanks so much. You're welcome so much. Please come back and I'll see you again. So be sparkly, be present, and pay attention to those dreams, folks. Here comes Mercury conjunct Neptune. Dreams. Dream, 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 dream.